right, everybody. This will likely be the last full episode in the Virginia area. This time around, I'll show you some views of Southeast Virginia, putting the final touches on to make the boat seaworthy, and a visit from a special guest, my mom. that worked and making the Texas tags that they're gonna be is the final step in tagging my boat. Texas. This boat has never been in Texas, and I don't know if it's ever going to be in Texas, but it's registered in Austin, Texas. And you like how this isn't symmetric? It's because uh, keep Austin weird, right? <laughs> and the last piece was way over there. I did it with some inverted action. Uh, and we're done. Now it's named. Now it's ready for official adventures. And that's where it's going.
you might see that there are a couple of cats right here. And uh, I'm here to explain what's happening. Um, you might remember Roni. Uh, Roni, I adopted in March, and she was nine and a half years old. Um, and she was sweet, but she was always just kind of resigned. She always just kind of hid under the couch for the longest time. Um, and I hadn't really planned on the whole boat thing in March. Um, but I decided to pursue that, and Roni never really seemed comfortable here. So, uh, I know some people will be grumpy about uh, me giving Roni back to a shelter. But I felt that was for the best, and I've discovered, I reached out to them, that she is now with another home. Um, turns out there's a lot of people adopting animals during the coronavirus, and so I kind of recognized this would be the best opportunity for her. So, you might ask, if she couldn't do the boat, why did I get these two cute little kitty cats named Nyan and Kumo? Uh, which in Mandinka, Nyan Kumo means cat. Um, I got them one because uh, they're awesome, and two, I got them very young because at a younger age they're much more likely to be able to be comfortable in a boat. So, uh, so far they seem really happy, they've been super friendly with me, I uh, got them from a white trash couple here in Virginia area, uh, and give them a little shower, I don't think they have fleas, but I'll them their shots and everything when they're old enough um yeah and otherwise see how we grow together i think it's gonna be an adventure and i'll miss roni for sure but here is uh this is nyan 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 say hi Meow. nyan you can tell because she's got or he's got neon eyes blue bluish neon green and and Kumo, here's Kumo. His his eyes are a little more yellow, hazelish. So the update. Um, right now, there's a tropical storm. Uh, it could be a, come a hurricane or just a tropical storm that's uh, going to come through here in two days. My plan was to leave in three days, um, and. Obviously, any hurricane schedules uh, are subjective. We'll see if it grows or shrinks, if it's obviously hitting <laughs> on when, on the day that I'm supposed to leave, uh, then I'm not going to leave. Um, but I am right now going and getting the supplies I need for the trip that I'm planning to make down to Charleston. The plan is to leave on Wednesday. It'll be a, a potentially a five-day trip. Um, I budgeted, I think, enough time see with this whole uh, storm thing but um, the uh, even then I mean if I leave a day or two late I could probably still make it in time so shouldn't be a huge issue and I'm really excited to see it uh, there's a lot to show you guys along the way I'll try to get some great shots of where I go and what I'm doing um, but part of that is also I you know I'm about to endure a hurricane here um, so I have to uh, it'll be good to see what that's like, you know, experience that, because up here in Nor Norfolk, Virginia, we don't get hit with anything super crazy.
so I'm uh, got another issue with a pump <laughs> again this is just every single day now um, I'm going back into the um, shower sump pump container to see what's going on but it's not the issue there's some uh, pressurized pump that's running and it will just it's been running for about uh, 12 hours now and I think that some might be wrong with the switch but I don't even looking at the wiring I'm not even sure where the switch comes from I don't know why it would be in the shower sump pump box because it's not supposed to be that um, but I'm gonna see if I can get in and find it. I believe it's this brown stripe wire right here that matches this brown strip wire up here. Uh, this guy. And so I need to see what this is, how this works, why it's currently triggering. Well, there's four wires going into here and how to correct that. Uh, so give me a minute and I'll see if I can figure it out. Uh, I think I think in here there's too much water. And I think that pump is trying to suck it out but from the wrong place. Looks like one of the pumps is wired to the wrong spot. Okay, so I guess I fixed it. Um, it's very odd. The I guess the pressure pump over here, that guy, uh, he's uh, he's triggered based on the pressure inside the shower sump pump. So it's two different pumps, or two different uh, switches, I guess. One is just uh, too much water in there. The other is the pressure of the water. I. I don't know, but it stopped uh, after I sent more water down the shower and through the shower sump uh, because there was enough water in there for it to not have activated the uh, the uh, float switch inside the shower sump container tank. Um, but it was under under the float switch, but it was apparently high enough pressure to activate that pump. But apparently that pump's not doing anything. Um, so. Uh, it's not exactly fixed that pump. I don't know what that pump is gonna be used for if clearly it's not pumping anything out when it's switched on But <laughs> I guess to turn it off. I will just run some more water down the drain of the shower and Worry about it later <laughs> So I have to put this thing back on I discovered that there's some Velcro little hookups up here So I had some leftover velcro pieces here that I'll stick to that so my cats don't try to run down in here because they have been trying to do that. Uh, so uh, right now I'm putting together the final little pieces to uh, be ready to go on Wednesday as well as be tied up and ready for this hurricane that's about to hit. Um, uh, for the hurricane really, I mean, it's probably going to be a tropical storm I think when it gets here. It might even be smaller. Um, but just to be careful, I'm going to tie up a few extra lines for the boat. Um, get it secured. If it was anything crazy extreme, I'd probably, you know, find somewhere inland to just go and be safe, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be too crazy. I'm just hopeful that since it's supposed to hit here Tuesday morning and I'm supposed to leave on Wednesday, um, I'm hopeful that uh, it's fully passed at that point. I, I don't know. It's moving at about 12 miles an hour, um, so in 24 hours time after it hits, it should move couple hundred 300 plus miles away hopefully that means we'll be good to go on Wednesday and now for questions um, I got asked in the last week uh, about uh, now that I've been in this boat for a month what do am, am I happy with it would I have gotten anything different um, and you know uh, if I'd change anything what would I change um, and it's kind of an interesting question because the price at which I bought the boat was I don't know, two thirds the list price of the actual boat in this condition, according to the person that surveyed it. Um, and so that's, I mean, I saved a lot of money in that respect. Uh, it's also when the, we were reaching the closing point, the seller, I, it was determined that a lot of people are currently buying boats because of coronavirus. And so 
I was lucky to lock down a uh, pretty much a pre-coronavirus price, but I think everything's pretty much gone well up. So right now is the time to sell your boat, essentially, because prices will be high. Um, looking at my the place I'm in right now, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, I, I currently those shades are closed, so my cats don't crawl on the bed and. Uh, poop on them, but they're getting litter trains. They're pretty close to done with that now. Um, but yeah, so the, the boat itself, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I'm actually happy with the size. I used to live in a really small bachelor sized apartment in Los Angeles and uh, it, it teaches you how to be in a sense minimalist, which I don't fully subscribe to, but I absolutely respect the idea of, you know, finding the pieces in your life that you value and otherwise if the, if you have some item that doesn't bring value to your life then just toss it out um, so uh, I've downsized very much to come in move in here um, but so far I love it I think you know I'm I'm learning tons I'm doing tons I just fixed the pump <laughs> again third time uh, if I was to do it again I think maybe you know if I'm in this for a few years and wanted to make it a little cheaper, I could go the sailing route. Uh, but this is honestly everything I need to know for this boat, I'd need to know for a sailboat and then more because uh, sailing uses a motor uh, when it needs to, so you have to have that fluency. Um, but then you also have to understand the winds and the sails and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a little expensive since I got the boat, but I've identified ways that I'll probably cut costs and I'm loving it. Thank you.